So can everyone see, see that? Awesome. So I feel like I've got you here under kind of false pretenses by calling it a launch, because it's definitely not <laughs> a launch in terms of um, like, go away and use this now. This is kind of a launch of a different kind. This is saying, this is where we're at. And now, yeah, kind of where do we go collectively from here? Um, so we're, as I've said, excited by the progress made and think we do have a good realistic way forward. But this is about getting <clears throat> more people around that table and more um, people kind of committed to this potentially as a solution. Um, I'm, I'll just say as well, there's quite a lot of slides because I anticipate obviously people can't make it and so I'm going to send the slides around afterwards so it's really clear um, for someone flicking through afterwards what what kind of has been said but um the purpose today for me is to kind of share with you what's been done build that awareness and understanding but also get your feedback and spark those conversations of kind of how we can keep that ball rolling so that's just a really brief outline which might have even changed so I'll update that but let's start with what we know where we've kind of started from everyone wants lots of data information up to date at their fingertips in a format that makes sense but no one wants to actually put effort into doing that keeping it up to date and um, we know there's a need because it comes up all the time why is this information not compiled in one place um, but the problem is everyone's talking about slightly different information potentially or or a, it's a variety of needs that we've got kind of across the sector and statutory. Um, and so to meet that variety of needs, there is a lot of platforms and products that are already out there have been created as potential solutions. So that's just a list of some of those. But what they all have in common is, is the data itself. Um, so they all do hold quite similar information. Fair enough, there might be slight differences, but it's generally about what the organisation is and what services they deliver, where that's delivered, who it's for. And we know there's, oh, sorry, I think someone's bringing me. There's people in the waiting room. Sorry, two seconds. In fact, I can turn that off. Oh, that's great. Hi, sorry about being waiting in the waiting room. Nice to see okay. the new joiners. Thanks. Um, so where I was at is just saying the broadly all of the solutions um, that exist to kind of help with service information um, broadly have the same challenges. That being the data itself being up to date reliable, it being kind of the right information that's captured issues around where that's held search how it's viewed um and the people who it's kind of been created for actually using it so is it actually fit for purpose and then clearly a huge one is like the record resourcing and costs um and who has access to view update it so how that's shared um And so we've kind of summarized those core challenges with this diagram. They're all interconnected, I think is the point, really, because unless you have good resourcing, um, you don't have good robust data collection, unless you've got a good kind of back end, people are not going to engage with it. Um, so that's just quite a helpful slide to summarize those challenges. Um, but in terms of the solution, people have kind of said, well, we need a joined up approach, which has cross sector support. And, and I do think that is a really good solution, but it's easier said than done. Um, and so Loop was that potential solution, which was in development since kind of 2018, 19. And the theory being that that was one back end to update and that would feed information to multiple front ends with multiple people keeping it up to date. So that was kind of heralded as the solution from then, but there were challenges around the partnership working um, and certain people changed in leadership roles. So, so it paused basically, um, hopefully many of you all know that, but 
um, we kind of took stock and asked what could the third sector do in the meantime, because it was very clear that there was there was this real need. I think through having those conversations with people about Loop, the third sector kind of said, yes, we do definitely need this and we don't want to lose those gains made by Loop. Um, so we embarked on this project and this is about the project, uh, the progress that we've made. So um, the kind of big exciting bit is that we do have a front end. Um, I think what's difficult, sorry, I'll just go through some of these, um, is, um, is the fact that this is currently just another one of those directory sites which add to the list of directory sites that exist. And it's absolutely not its finished form. This is very much a kind of pilot which has kind of third sector ownership. It's something that we could kind of control start to finish. Um, and it does give us a really exciting opportunity. And it kind of showcases what could be achieved in this short space of time with the right people around the table with kind of co-production. Um, and so I'll just jump out of this screen share. Um, and and show you it. Oh, some more people. Um, you can can you still see my screen? Yeah. Fantastic. So I'll put the link in the chat. It's called Local Leads. I mean, it could be called anything. Where is the chat? You can do that, Jenny. Oh, can you? Thanks. Um, fab. So yeah, I think for for kind of a few minutes, I'd be happy for you to to kind of go on that and look around yourself. But um, obviously, you'll see there's not tons of services added. So as I said, this is just a pilot site, and it's really simple. It's got kind of the categories that we think. Um, well, the group thought were relevant, um, but there might not be things against each one. Oh, so there's one, um, but then you go in and it's just got information about the service, where it is, um, the kind of contact details, you can print it, all the stuff that you would expect from any directory site. There's absolutely nothing kind of groundbreaking here, um, but I think, what what has been kind of really successful about it is the the excitement of the organizations within the group um so i whizzed past the slide which said um which groups were involved but basically to um to get the kind of co-produced element the groups involved it we kind of went for a range of small medium-sized organizations um and then some kind of bigger ones so touchstone is potentially the biggest but then there's bhi hamara um Liz asylum seekers network so lassen ls14 trust um and new Watley community center um who all kind of brought different perspectives so one thing which we which we decided was that um, where is the line? Where do you draw the line between what's a service, what's an event, what's kind of a small group? All of these really detailed questions, which, which are the crux of a lot of the challenges around these databases. Um, and so, so we could kind of, as a group, make those decisions as to like the scope and initial scale that something like this um, is useful for in their organization and actually that's that's a question that we'll be putting to you in the breakout room is kind of like how can you see something like this being used in your organization um i think one of the key one of the key things that came out of narrowing down the the remit um and focusing it in to say actually what's going to be useful for third sector organizations was things like exporting the list of results as like an Excel, because we know like a lot of the time, 
you then want to do something else with it so it's kind of to to do other asset mapping kind of outcomes where it's like actually what do we do with that list um so yeah i think we're we're pleased with kind of how it's how it's come about but um but no there's a lot more to be done i'll just whip back to my slides I think we were going to have like a two minutes of you just clicking around. So I'll actually just be quiet for that time. <laughs> uh, if I stop sharing my screen, that helps. Everybody managed to get onto it. I need to take this waiting room off. People still still keep coming in. <laughs> There's a few Jenny, nice comments in the chat. Do you want me to co-host, Jenny? I'm happy to, and then I can look at that and you can focus on the presentation. I can. Thank you. Yeah, there's some nice comments from Suzanne, from James, Ruth. Few others are having a look at it so far. Fab. And then um, the slides I kind of whizzed over were just a bit of background to um to the project. Uh, well sorry, not background to the project, background to what else is happening in the kind of digital landscape. Um, and the fact that this is like one piece of a much wider puzzle. And we talked kind of as a group um, to kind of develop the project quite at length about that and where, where we could affect change or where we could kind of make get results that we um, wanted and where, so I think a lot of it was tied up in, in reasons why Loop um, ended up being paused. So uh, I'll share, I'll share my screen again, just to go through a, a bit of that wider context. Um, Um, yeah, so that's the list of organisations. So the, there's a huge amount of, of maps that exist out there. And for anyone who's interested afterwards, there's, there's a link in this deck to kind of that list which I've collated. So it's got things like helping leads, common ground map, all of that stuff, which if we were to kind of have this really great joined up solution. It's like how many of these um, maps would be rolled into that and how many, yeah, I think there's just a lot once you kind of see, see how much is out there. But in terms of digital, what else is happening? Um, there's work on the digital strategy within the council. Liz directory is getting a site refresh. Um, the NHS app is obviously like a, a major thing and that really should have signposted into what help is out there what services are out there delivered at local community level so that was an ambition of loop to connect with as well um and then within the third sector we've got mindwell and then a load of kind of smaller um smaller maps that have been pulled together that have that have information about their specific thing um it's a lot of acronyms there, but it's things to kind of look up afterwards, um, potentially. So, yeah, I think with all that in mind, it was it was about narrowing down the the remit of this project in particular, but also about finding that starting point of of yeah, where where the third sector, what does the third sector actually want? Um, and so this is some of the some kind of quotes from where the group came came at this from 
Um, so like what what is going to be different about this at this time? Like it has been tried before a lot and there's a lot of talk. Where's the tangible thing? Um, it's about sustainability. And we kind of just need something because we don't have anything. <laughs> um, and then also just kind of this is exciting to think that we could actually have something usable. Um, so I think that's a, quite a succinct summary of like where we came at this from or like the variety of opinions. Um, and so, yeah, that's how we got to creating that front end, which I've shared with you, because it, it was kind of, yeah, the group really wanted to see that tangible thing, something that was really simple, easy to use, and that we had kind of third sector ownership of. Um, yeah. So I think after kind of hopefully setting that up in not too a uh, disjointed way, um, we'll, we'll break out just to hear kind of, maybe you can feedback some initial thoughts, like you probably have similar thoughts to, to the, what the group fed back there in those quotes. Um, but if there's anything else, any kind of challenges, opportunities that, that come to mind, um, because I'm, ve I'm well aware that a lot of you will be involved in lots of other little projects as well um, that have been to do with mapping and sharing information. And so you definitely, yeah, will bring a real richness, um, hopefully to, to your breakout room. Um, and they're the questions we kind of pose in because I think like, like the quote said, there has already been a lot of talk about this. So hopefully um, this could be more tangible. So thank you. I mean, hopefully that was a good discussion for everyone, but I, it was really good in our room. Um, I think for the for the remaining time, we were gonna kind of feed back a couple of key points each from our breakout rooms and maybe discuss, it is quite a big group. So maybe have, yeah, take like if there's a burning question, but there is a lot more um, in terms of detail that I've worked up kind of on the slides about what we see as, the next steps, recommendations um, of how we see kind of this going forward. Um, and so I, I don't wanna kind of bore you with all that detail, but um, there is, yeah, kind of a report to, to come out of this, this project, this kind of six month project, which will summarize those recommendations. And I mean, the the kind of scope i'm sure you'll understand of like ambition of where you could go with this can be pitched like at various levels really like it could the remit could stay quite small for quite a long time and or it could be like yeah we can really invest in this and take it um somewhere quite quickly but um yeah i'll i'll come to that afterwards after we've had a bit of discussion um and because I'm aware this is in till half 12, but potentially people might have to duck out at 12. We'll see how it goes anyway. Um, oh yeah, Jane South, apologies leaving now, no worries. Um, yeah, so I'll, or I don't know if Pip wants to feedback from our group, um, but if- Yeah, if do you want me to? And that, yeah, gives you a bit of a- Only, only if you're happy to, but- um, Yeah, if, very happy I'll let to. you know the order if, if if you're happy to go, and then we could take Claire, Chris, Sophie, John, and just keep it to, yeah, kind of a minute or two. And then we'll take, if you want to put a burning question in the chat or something that you want to raise, um, like straight after those points, then feel free. Yeah, so we had a range of different um, people involved in social prescribing from primary care and also from third sector perspectives. And, you know, generally there was a sense that it looked really good and people could absolutely see the value, but needing to make sure that it was up to date and all of the things that um, I know you're thinking about, Jenny, around expiry dates and, you know, all of the things that kind of make it work practically and making sure that it links through to the more specialist sites like Mindwell and um, through the maze and, you know, all of the other kind of really important resources. I think people really could see how... Um, it could have that 
fit, but that we'd need that sort of sense of sign up and ownership and somebody to take responsibility for doing that. Um, and then we had a really good conversation about kind of who it's for and making sure that some of the sort of access and um, translation and, and those features kind of people had good confidence in those because having information that's enabling and empowering for people as well as a resource for and about the third sector feels just so critical um, and some really good suggestions from Ruth and others about making sure that we you know have go out and have further conversations for example with some of the well-being coordinators and and other people and some members of the public to check that sort of less techie perspective on it really so some yeah really good practical stuff general lots of um you know positiveness and a little bit of cynicism that you know these things do come and go but perhaps if, if we have that ownership we can make this really work because we are the people that can amazing thank you did i say claire next <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think you did, Jenny. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'd echo that in in our group really. That particularly that point about ownership and that actually the um, it, it's it's going to work if the people who are also the beneficiaries and users are involved in pulling data together. So we had um, I, I think pretty much in a, in agreement with those comments from Pip. Um, it looks good, looks useful, looks like it's worth investing in, um, and that's in terms of you know investing time and resource to make it to make it work. Um, definitely picked up on the point about accessibility of um, in in a couple of different ways. One is accessibility um, and inclusion, and making sure that the records that are in there have information about accessibility. Um, physical accessibility and you know how the services are available and so on so I think we'd need to add, I think it may already be in in there and some of the back end stuff but really flagging that and also really critically in terms of accessibility of the site and, and again I think that you discussed that in um, uh, in your group about making sure that it is inclusive and that it is accessible for for people who have um, different means of accessing it and so on um, that point as well about uh, the, um, oh, actually I'll come back to that, um, but the, the, the point around it being self-maintaining, we had quite a good discussion around this and some of the ways that that will make it more uh, useful and relevant and some really kind of practical and tangible ways of doing that. Um, so uh, Damien had some nice, from Men's Health, had some nice points around um, for example, having this on your email footer, that's what they've been doing with uh, with, with their um, equivalent um, and also promoting to networks that you know are going to benefit from it and other organisations that you know are going to benefit from it so that it's, it's worthwhile them putting their data in and keeping that up to date. Um, yeah, so some nice, really practical flags. And then again, we had the, the, a similar conversation about who's this for? Who needs to benefit from it? Who needs to 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 use it? And that the the focus on the third sector and the focus on um, making sure that it is continues to be useful will will help it to become sustainable. Um, so I think that was that was kind of you know a key point that ran through all of this. Fab, thank you. Um, we will probably get to a point at the end. I don't know who I said last where it's um, repeating the same stuff. So Would you say yeah. Lucky yeah, I think I'm next, Jen, and I think we're going to see that. <laughs> quite a lot of that has been has been covered really well. Um, I suppose a couple of things that I'd add a couple of questions that that came up in ours. Um, we, we talked about just being third sector, which I think is a really good idea to start with at least. Um, but where do you draw the line on that? Some of those third sector services obviously move into sort of health services almost. And so where do we put the parameters around? That would be a really interesting question. Um, I suppose the other thing is um, just going back to what you were talking about as regards um, the who's going to be in control of it etc 
um, we had that conversation about Hounslow Connect, where um, you know there is a team there that's invested in in running that site, not just as a site, but as a sort of tangible living thing that happens in communities, so people know where to go. Um, and I think that fear came through in the other conversations as well that we've all been here before a little bit, and actually it would need some infrastructure and some constant support um, if it were to be really successful. Yeah, no, absolutely fair enough. Um, was it John? Thank you. So brilliant. Um, our group was like a miniature version of the uh, all the work that's brought us this far. So what was amazing was it was a very rich conversation. Many of the same points came up um, as have come up through the development um, without repeating anything that's already been said. And I've got pretty comprehensive notes. Um, there was there was some there was a lot of very good stuff talked about about how it appears and and its simplicity and it being a good idea um zoe uh, from mindwell mentioned about the the idea that uh, it was very important to that they uh curate information and collate it they don't try and produce it and so they were looking forward to being able to uh, direct people in this in this uh direction um there was some kind of co uh, conflicting thoughts though around uh all the stuff we discussed around locality based versus city wide uh we talked about the challenge of um keeping it up to date and uh how we would encourage people to participate in it there's other directories there's other things going on um and how do we encourage people to keep it up to date and, and to use it um another challenge was flagged around uh, those organizations who maybe don't have a web presence or don't really have something to point to and how, how much or little information do you give and how do you even encourage them to share that information, especially when they're very small, maybe they're a, a, a social group or something like that, which is very important, but where they don't particularly want uh, all of their private um, uh, details being shared on a directory was one of those things. Um, we talked... Uh, yeah, I don't know about the benefits of maybe taking a simpler approach. So being less rich, less having less information and then being able to point people towards a richer source of information so that it doesn't necessarily go out of date. Um, but these are what was really helpful is I think most of the, 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 the points that were raised were things that have already been kind of uh, um, discussed. There were some other things as well around potentially being able to demonstrate capacity within an organization. Uh, so are there any spaces? So if you're referring, and then we started to say, well, but that's different because some things might just be like there are 30 people that can do this this week. Uh, but then there might be other things where, well, you're on a waiting list for two months and then you get help for six to nine months at a time they did you know the different things how would you square that mention some stuff around potentially um uh oh stuff to do with um who's going to fund it uh and that's probably the the, the, the biggest issue is is it's going to be something that we are expected to find within our existing capacity or is someone else going to um pony up some dough uh, to, to make this happen. It feels like there's a real need as well for the Leeds directory and some of the other directories to have a really clear sense of who their audience is and why people would come here rather than go there. And um, yeah, I think people are, have, there's an awful lot of effort and staff hours and volunteer hours and other things that have been plowed into the things that have come before this. So how do we ensure that we're being respectful of all that rather than declaring year zero and going, right, this time we're going to get it right. Um, so I think that that was probably a reasonable summation-ish. I'm bound to say that. I'm giving it, aren't I? But um, if anyone else wants to chip in, feel free. Thank you. No, that's great. And I think that is, um, yeah, a really interesting one um, that you ended on about, yeah, kind of being able to utilise and actually learn from everything that's gone before rather than, yeah, starting from scratch every time. And that was definitely something that... Um, I think I was conscious of with with the pause of loop even saying kind of well how how can we go from it being like seeming so close to then back to zero so I think that's absolutely key is kind of just keeping um keeping the ball rolling and a big part of having so many people on calls like this is keeping that understanding of what's gone before um, and the challenges and everything kind of for, to the front of people's minds and them taking it into their various networks and conversations that they're that you're all kind of part of um cool so just Sophie left I think thank you 
And yeah, it's good going after John because that was really comprehensive. And then mm-hmm. I have to add to that. Um, so same as a lot of the other groups have said, but um, some also really practical solutions to some of the issues um, that have been faced by other sites. Um, one point was that um, it would be good if it then feeds information to all the other websites anyway. So it's kind of putting it into one website and it goes to those others, making it, you know, I think maybe like what Loop was intended. Um, to think about practicality around whether it's accessible, so the postcode map and things like that. And if it is down to the third sector or these uh, separate organisations to upload their information, you know, having reminders to make sure it's still up to date um, to, to, to say, you know, this is like it is and does it need changing? Do you need to change the end date of this project? Just very, very practical solutions to some to, to what would be an issue if it was absolutely running. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Um, so it is it is twelve o'clock, and I think what um, what would be I, I'm just thinking what's useful for everyone versus what's useful for me because I we've got a really good um, set of not answers, but kind of proposals to a lot of the things that have just been discussed in kind of your breakout groups. And, and so I think it'd be helpful to just, yeah, go through um, my remaining slides to kind of help, um, help put some of those tangible uh, things to the questions that have been kind of posed in a lot of those groups about well, how is it going to integrate with other stuff? Um, so I'll just yeah share my screen again. And I do obviously appreciate it's quite a lot of time. So yeah, feel free to stretch your legs, get a cup of tea, whatever you need to do, um, obviously at any point. Oh, not the end. So kind of the where do we go from here um, is, yeah, is the key question. Um, and as I said, here's kind of recommendations that I think what we think should happen next. And it's structured around kind of back to the original diagram, those kind of interconnecting core challenges um, that are that exist basically with any, any directory site. Um, so in terms of roles and responsibilities, there is as I said, a sliding scale, but in terms of this as a project, kind of thinking about it um, in those terms, there's ideally kind of a working group that comes, that goes forward um, to kind of keep answering those questions, to keep kind of talking about those challenges and to drive it forward. So obviously like a lead for that, um, who keeps connected with as I mentioned, like all of that other digital stuff that's happening, keeps involved in those conversations and can can make sure it's it's not this siloed thing. So it's about kind of keeping connected and there being yeah like a person who's responsible for that, coordinating the kind of wider working group, um, and then obviously those that working group those working group members who are kind of responsible for the usefulness of the site and. Uh, some of that will be kind of engagement with other organisations, people using it and kind of making sure that information is kept up to date, but not necessarily up to dating, up to, <laughs> updating it themselves. It's I think there's another level down of kind of role, which is about the data inputters, data collectors. Um, who are responsible for actually adding the new services, keeping it up to date. Um, and that does need to be a really specific role that has responsibility for that, rather than it just being what we know has happened in the past, where if you all keep your, your listing up to date, then of course it will be up to date because we know that doesn't happen. Um, and then potentially some kind of comms role to do, again, it depends on the level of ambition, but that wider engagement where if it's supposed to be um members of the public like yeah some of that stuff but that might come further down the line and then obviously a role for developers and kind of the tech side of things that 
that do need to provide that sound advice and actually do the tech. Um, in terms of moving around the circle, I should have had a little diagram there so you could see where we were, but um, the back end front end integrations. So currently this has been built with integration in mind. Um, it's It's got a back end where you add the services um, and it has got obviously the front end where you guys can all see it. And the way that it's structured aligns with the Earth Referral UK standard. So that was something that Loop um, championed. And also the categories is a real kind of bigger sticking point than, than you would imagine, really, because for things to transfer across and data to be shared, um, if one calls it a, an older people service and one calls it a over 65, are they the same thing? It's kind of like, where is that? Um, where are those possibilities to share data in terms of how it's categorized? So this at the minute does use local government association standard categorizations where possible, although with our kind of end user of leads, third sector organizations in mind, there was a couple of instances where something we wanted wasn't there. Um, and so actually, I think there's a bigger piece of work to do with kind of liaising with together with those kind of categorizations to say, like, why does that not exist? Like, that is something that we want. Um, and so, yeah, so it could definitely be used as that central data store where we promote it to say, this is where the information is added. And then that can feed out. Um, so the last point is kind of surfacing on, on these multiple existing sites would be a really positive, I suppose not immediate next step, but but down the line, things like MindWell, like we've already said, through the maze, LOPF, et cetera, doing good leads. Um, so all of your feedback talked a lot about the data collection issues and the fact that up-to-date data is the crux of it. That is the reason why anyone would use it. Um, and so as touched on in the roles, that, that does need to be a responsibility. So I think it's about having a network of resourced committed data inputters. Um, and these could be either kind of dedicated roles. So you have one person, that's kind of all they do. I think that's what, kind of happens at Leeds directory or I'm sure happens with various other directories. Um, and I think there's pros and cons to that, or it could be, well, and it could be a mixture of the two, but it could be part of existing roles within the sector. So either um, utilizing some of the, the kind of networks that exist, like the community anchor network, could that be an extension of, of one of their roles or the community connectors. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of options. There's a lot of pros and cons, and it's it's something that I think, um, as with anything, would would be good to have flexibility about. But it be a really strong network so that there's no grey area in terms of like, oh, I didn't, I don't feel like that's my responsibility. It kind of it needs to be, um, yeah, a timed and resourced responsibility. And obviously data sharing agreements and expectations and knowing how to actually update the system needs to happen. Second to last, sorry, it's a lot of information, um, the engagement piece. So I think the fact that all of those roles exist and the networks of who those roles are connected to is like a big, um, a big part of like how that could be a success. Um, and then uh yeah instead of i think we have talked about this but instead of it being like something that you overly need to promote like word of mouth is really powerful and if it actually works if it's actually up to date if it's got useful information in it then then it should it should spread quite naturally but i think like uh, ruth in my breakout group said if if it's for pushing more wide more widely than just kind of within our third sector networks then um then absolutely kind of comms promotion 
um, would really need to be thought about. Um, but again, I think that's a little bit further down the line than an immediate next step. Uh, so lastly, and I think what people said is the, the biggest, <laughs> is the resourcing. And we all know, yeah, it's it seems like a bit of an uphill struggle, but I think there are there are a lot of resources that are spread across a lot of departments. And I think it's the difficulty of being able to bring some of that together to kind of this collective um collective goal but but in the kind of tap simply simple forms there's there's kind of the people costs in terms of all of those roles that we've identified um and we could put figures to that in the recommendations report that will be coming out of this um developer costs which again it's going to vary between like what do we need just to keep it running to like how how often do we test it out get feedback from the users improve it um and i know that that's yeah not a simple question either um and then integration costs so like each i think each could be seen as its own um own mini project so to kind of integrate it with mind well to integrate it with through the maze and that's kind of exactly how what the case was with gloop as well there's going to be unique challenges with each one because it's about not only I suppose it's decision there's a lot of decisions to be made as to whether you just say yes we're just happy to take a feed and and um, happy with the data that's in there or if there's little things to be tweaked and changed so I think again um, it's not simple but it's absolutely um, foreseen and and just depends on the ambition and yeah like I said there there are key pots of funding that, that exist that this is a perfect candidate for so let's try yeah get it funded um so the next steps from us are to follow up with a short questionnaire and so it will be um yeah it will be long but it'll just be really helpful i think after you've had time to mull it over a little bit to kind of get yeah short sharp answers to a few few questions that we can include in the report i'll send the recording round so you can share that with anyone who wasn't able to make it and I know there's quite a few people that replied saying they they're really sad to have missed it but they'll catch up um and then kind of an a bit of an ask so if if possible and if you do see this as a viable way forward to kind of advocate for it as a solution and and take take it to um spaces whether that's kind of meetings with statutory colleagues or whatever where where there could be some um some progress um and then yeah kind of we'll keep looking but but keep your eyes open as well for where there's opportunities for that investment and commitment um and i think that's me done so i'll stop my share <laughs> um Oh, we've got loads of time left. I've not been looking at the clock. That's that's kind of nice for you to have in in your day. But I'm definitely happy to take some questions, um, and there might be a nice bit of discussion for those who can stick around. Thanks, Jenny. There was a couple of comments at, uh, towards the end in the chat. I don't know if you've seen those um, from from John. And uh, again, this really ties in with using what's already there, trying to. Um, yeah, see see what we've what we've got and how we can use those uh, networks and roles and responsibilities and is it a question of tweaking some things so that that different um, people have a, you know it's it's not over burdensome I guess you know using what's already there yeah. Um, and I guess that just ties in with what you said before about you know connecting with the directory and various other things that, that are happening already. Um, and uh, yeah, not starting from, from zero, it's not day one. Yeah. yeah, Pitt's got a hand up. And then I do have um, actually something that I can show you that I didn't think I was gonna have time to, is like a, a one of the integrations that's kind of being tested. So I could show you how that looks on the LOPF site currently. 
it's a little teaser but Pip if you want to oh sorry I don't want to compete with that but I, I just thought it'd be really good I think John's made some really great points isn't he about common data set and um kind of consistency and different languages but also he's thought about whether social prescribers could have a role in updating it whether it could potentially be woven into their contract and other community um, anchors network. I think um, Claire has left now, hasn't she? From oh no, she's still here from Voluntary Action Leeds. And um, Ruth and um, Sanya, others may have some views on. You know, is there something about making that a local or a sort of delegated responsibility? But really important, your point about it, it would have to be really clear. It's got to be a strong and clear ask. But that that building it in into those things sounds like that would be brilliant so would it be good to know what other people think yeah it's definitely. tapping into that hyper hyper local knowledge isn't it um and and by in doing so that makes it place-based so i think we need to be really conscious of of where kind of organizations that sit across different wards with perhaps communities of interest um as, as their main kind of um, connection that we that we don't kind of miss that out by being two place based but I think there is something to be said for like using the same methodology to collect the data on a really local level and then pressing a button to magically make it into one big big thing isn't it um, I think I, I would say is it's a it's a small detail thing um claire but i really like the the val approach on the doing good leads website where actually if you've got something to say um you write it yourself and you submit it and at your end all you're doing is cu curating uh, by saying yep yeah, this this fits here and pressing the button to release it so you're not doing you're not doing the input the 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 construction of the of, of whether it's information about an event or um, a request or whatever it is that's coming from the um, from the from the individuals of the different providers across the, the city and you're just say uh, doing good leads they just they're curating it into into order and and that's by the effort that the team put into the background stuff and when they were designing the doing good leads website Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, I think it is that mixture of kind of being empowered to do it yourself and also but having the drive from someone who's kind of prompting you to do it. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't know which order it was, sorry, but I think, John, you had your hand up before, earlier, maybe. That I've missed. So, yeah. Just a quickie. It's just to yeah. say that with social prescribing, when I, I, I'm not speaking ill of social prescribing, but frequently they contact my organisation without really much of a clue what we do. If they were responsible for updating information, then we would get a lot fewer calls from social prescribing inappropriately. So, I think it would save time and effort to kind of make the people who are in charge of guiding people to local resources to make them responsible for the upkeep of those local resources. Mm. but I'm not a commissioner. John, just to add on to that, I was, I was going to go back to Claire's point about something very similar, really. Uh, so recently, we, I've been going around trying to bring together all the resources in our area to put it into our, our own personal uh, database website. And the other thing about that is once you go to an organisation, you sit with them and you it's all relational, isn't it? So if those social prescribers or whoever are sitting in their space with those people, seeing users, etc., then there's something much more valuable to that. And then when you are referring, you're much more likely to buy into the whole process rather than it always being done in isolation online. Um, and, and, you know, let's let's draw on the strengths of what we think the third sector is. It's mobile, it's relational, whereas big local authorities can't be that. And I think we shouldn't, you know, if we can keep that as part of the model, that would be really exciting. Yeah, that's a fab point. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, thanks for highlighting jo, the um, local care partnerships creating their own local directories. I think that's something that, um, yeah, is is has been happening and is continuing to happen. 
um, because this is a gap or kind of in that space where it's like, well, we need something now. And so, yeah, absolutely. I've got lists of like the green active provider network. There's the um, the asset map. There's there's a lot. And and yeah, and I think until until we can confidently kind of say there is commitment to the one thing, I think it's absolutely fair for all those things to happen because it's it is like solving their need in that moment in time. I think what's frustrating is is that it's potentially time and effort wasted when when it could be yeah more joined up. So I think it's inevitable, but yeah, difficult to see <laughs> to see more and more popping up and more effort going into this. So if um yeah, I suppose there's something in there around sharing learning and expertise because yeah these people don't have to start from scratch even if they do want to have their own little one um i think there's there's a lot of people here in this room and also that have embarked on on things that they call asset mapping before that actually can share share that learning with each other um to then make those informed decisions rather than kind of reacting so much but um yeah. Anybody else? Jenny, I was just wondering, and I may have totally missed the point, but could you see this as a different interface that plugs into the Mindworld directory and just pulls out the content in relation to third sector and, and the organisations that you want? Because there's a lot of funding already put behind Mindwell and we're busy updating directories and things like that. And that stuff sort of there. Um, and I just wonder whether, you know, it got pulled out and put into Leeds Local. Um, yes, so that's a really good point and reminding me that I was going to show you the um, the integration that's that's been done as a test, if I can find it. One second. And then, yeah, I'll let you go. Where? So, um, so you'll uh, hopefully recognize that this is um, how the service results appeared on the local lead site, but this is actually on the Leeds Older People's Forum site in a like temporary test kind of uh, environment, it's password protected. But this is basically, um, again, not super finished functionality there would be stuff to add there's no kind of search at the minute but it's basically automatically pulling um the category older people um the information that's been added to the local leads back end selected for older people and that's just pulling and showing um kind of within i think it is within an iframe although there's been debates about how good that is nowadays but um on the lopf site so that's just an example of i think there could be your own color for example or i think there's probably questions about formatting and how you would want it to look but ultimately yeah i think if um if results could be added if listings could be added to the back end in that collective way um and then they are, yeah, shown on the Mindwell site. And like I said, there's just there's just a bunch of little questions to be worked out for how that would happen. But actually, it can it can happen. So this is the test to show that uh, in in an initial, yeah, form. So hopefully that's exciting as well. But I'll stop my share. Thank you, Ayman. Could all the stuff go into the Mindwell directory and be pulled out to the Leeds local and then fed out just in a practical way of moving forward? I know you've done all this work and everything, but there's so much funding gone into Mindwell and hopefully we'll continue that people are there updating the directory and doing all that. And it's so there is a repository there that I, it may or may not contain what you have already, but it certainly could do. And then you just push it out to that interface and then integrate to all the other ones just in a practical keeping it going funding staffing all that yeah 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 yeah. i suppose it's the same 
difference essentially it's kind of like just a decision around where where's the back end feeding feeding other stuff um if that's mind well and and the commitment all of that other stuff about roles where people go to update what that mechanism is if that is agreed i guess within the working group to say yeah why not absolutely mind well could could be that the the lead of that as long as um there's more information than just kind of the mental health service stuff and it's structured in the same way categorized in the same way i don't see why not um yeah yeah i mean i i know there's loads of entries in the directory um, yeah and i don't know if they're all um the same as yours but there's definitely potential to yeah put them in and pull them out in a certain way that you know is shaped around what the leeds local is doing yeah 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 cool i think it's all absolutely up for up for grabs up for debate and i think it's just um yeah just get about getting the right people around the table so like i said the next steps i'll follow up with everyone with the um with the questionnaire and if if there's someone you think or if you're itching to be part of the working group going forward or yes yeah, someone you think needs to be involved like just just get in touch really let's keep keep it moving Oh, thank you yeah no just wanted to say massive thanks jenny to all the people on that working group i think you know that sort of people kind of being on this journey and having those conversations and you know um it's been incredibly helpful hasn't it having sophie and um chris and john and, and so many other people kind of contributing and helping getting into this point i think there is some real commitment from voluntary action needs and form central to make sure that we keep supporting it but it's something as well about it being owned across different sector you know partners and meeting the needs of different parts of the kind of third sector as well so i think anyone can join that working group can they or if if people want to contact you to find out more about that um, and we will absolutely keep looking for resource because this stuff matters so much i think doesn't it but equally we want it to be shaped and led by that sort of practical reality of what's needed yeah, so I just wanted to say massive thanks, Denny, because I know it's been, you know, it's, it's weaving together lots of different things, but I think you've brought it to such a strong position that we can really leap from now. I don't think we should be apologetic about how much it's complicated, because it's incredibly complicated, but actually you've really helped to clarify it and put us in a strong position to get to the next phase with it. Yeah, no, I absolutely do think we're getting there. We're at the, there's light at the end of the tunnel for sure. Thank you. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, um, thank you. I'll yeah, be in touch. And thanks for all your input. Really helpful and valuable. Yeah. See ya.